We just got our copy of Weirdwood Manor. Let's check out what's in the box. Weirdwood Manor is a cooperative card and resource management game by Grey Ridge Games. It's made for one to five players, takes between 90 and 120 minutes, and is recommended for ages 13 and up. First off, we have our rule book. It has really detailed information, lots of examples. Uh, it goes through all of the game components and the recommended way to set up. I kind of wish they had used a sturdier binding rather than just the thin paper. I feel like that would have felt a lot better for the size of this book. There are three fey monsters, each with their own unique mechanics and challenges. Each of the backs of the fey monster board has their setup instructions and some advice on how to play against them. The first is Min Wraith, who drains Lady Weirdwood and heals from scarabs. The next is the Chaos Ogre. This is the recommended first fey to attempt to battle when you're new to the game. He gets stronger from blight and can destroy rooms. Then we have Theris the Dark Mage, who plans to corrupt Lady Weirdwood. Players must clear scarabs in order to be able to counter his spells. All of the fey monster boards and the character boards feel very sturdy. They're using high quality materials. So I haven't read them myself yet, but there is a trilogy of books, and I believe that all of the characters are based on characters that are in their books. I really like the idea of that, uh, you know, having an immersive world outside just the board game. But, you know, there's enough descriptions, and again, on the back of each of the character boards, it kind of tells you how to play it, what the character is really about, and some tips and tricks. I really love how they've gone with a dual layer board, which allows the tracking cubes to stay in place rather than just resting on top of a single layer board. This is a wonderful quality of life improvement over some other games which utilize similar tracking bars. You know, one minor bump can usually send that stuff flying and this is a saving grace against that. We'll come back to these little punch out ones. The board itself comes in two halves. Again, they've gone with a dual layer system and it has the starting rooms attached. Each of the early bird pledgers have their name listed on the back of the board, which is a really lovely touch. They fit together like a nice, easy puzzle. This plastic divider holds all of the game components firmly in their places, which is great if you are a store the games on their side kind of gamer. Here is the inner corridor ring, which tracks what time of day it is. The outer corridor comes in four pieces. This tracks the number of days that you've been inside Weirdwood Manor. The biggest tiles are the outer ring rooms. These again feel sturdy and the unique artwork on each is really nice. The sort of pie shaped pieces are the inner ring rooms. and the smaller rectangle rooms are the middle rings rooms. We have a nice bag of baggies for once we unpack all of the rest of this. The deluxe edition of the game has some upgraded components like these scarabs. I expect that these are cardboard punch outs on the standard version. The next bag is filled with all of the wooden tracking cubes in a number of colors. These are the character and fey monster standees. They are acrylic in the deluxe version uh, and cardboard in standard. The brown and gold tokens are Lady Weirdwood, which are used for one of the fey monsters. Uh, green is knowledge, blue, mana, pink, power. These are all the deluxe version. Uh, the standards are all cardboard punch outs. There are a whole bunch of different custom dice and next up, we have the companion cards. These cards have a little bit of a high resource cost, um, but add a slot to your character board for you to play some additional cards and each have a special ability. Uh, in the same size stack, we've got the quip reference cards for each player, double-sided with turn instructions on the back. The next deck here are the Quests mini expansion cards, which is a Kickstarter exclusive. This takes up a slot on your player board and has a goal to achieve, so it's just another way to add an extra layer of replayability if you got it. The Warden Tactic cards are special rewards cards. 
once you acquire these, you place it in your player area, and you may play it onto an action card on future turns. Next up are the various Fey monster decks. These are interesting because it shows you on the front of them what actions are going to be taken by the monster on its turn. The character action card decks have 13 cards per deck. And the different cards dictate your movements, if you're able to attack, and other abilities that you are able to use. The punch out sheet includes all of the stretch goals that were reached as part of the Kickstarter. This includes extra room tiles, unique fire and rubble tokens, and a blank room to design one for yourself. That is it for what's in the box. Join us next time for how to set up your first playthrough. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time. Sazaze.